mother of two banking executive from Albuquerque, 43, is killed after being sucked out of Southwest jet window for several minutes when it exploded midair. A Wells Fargo exec was killed after she was almost sucked out of her Southwest Airlines flight window following a midair explosion. Jennifer Rye Arden, 43, a mother of two from Albuquerque, was returning from a business trip when the plane's left engine exploded sending shrapnel flying into a window next to her seat. Passengers desperately scrambled to drag the banking executive back inside the aircraft and she was rushed to hospital immediately after the flight from New York to Dallas made an emergency landing at Philadelphia International Airport at 11.27 am, but authorities confirmed she later died. Passenger Alfred Tumlinson, of Corpus Christi, Texas, said he saw a man in a cowboy hat rush forward a few rows to grab that lady to pull her back in. She was out of the plane. He couldn't do it by himself, so another gentleman came over and helped to get her back in the plane, and they got her. Jennifer Rye Arden, a mother of two from Albuquerque, was on a business trip when the plane's left engine exploded sending shrapnel flying into a window next to her seat. Rye Arden, pictured with her husband, was rushed to hospital immediately after the flight from New York to Dallas made an emergency landing at Philadelphia International Airport at 11.27 am, but authorities confirmed she later died. Another passenger, Eric Zilbert, an administrator with the California Education Department, said, from her waist above, she was outside of the plane. Passengers struggled to somehow plug the hole while giving the badly injured woman CPR. Passengers did some pretty amazing things under some pretty difficult circumstances, Philadelphia Fire Commissioner Adam Thiel said. Amanda Borman, of New York, said she was asleep near the back when she heard a loud noise and oxygen masks dropped. Everybody was crying and upset, she said. You had a few passengers that were very strong, and they kept yelling to people, you know, it's okay. We're going to do this. I just remember holding my husband's hand, and we just prayed and prayed and prayed. And the thoughts that were going through my head of course were about my daughters, just wanting to see them again and give them a big hug so they wouldn't grow up without parents. A U.S. NTSB investigator is on scene examining damage to the engine of the Southwest Airlines plane in this image released from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Annunciation Catholic School where her two children attend school, identified Rye Arden as the victim on Tuesday afternoon. She was en route from New York when her plane experience, sick, trouble, assistant principal Amy McCarty wrote in an email to parents, according to abqjournal.com. At this point, the family needs all the prayers we can offer. Rye Arden, the wife of former city of Albuquerque Chief Operations Officer Michael, was the vice president of community relations for Wells Fargo Bank, New Mexico, and had been on a business trip for the bank at the time of the explosion. The 43-year-old, a graduate from the University of New Mexico, was heavily involved with her local community and volunteering. Rye Arden managed Wells Fargo's community projects and its annual United Way community support campaign. Seven other people were injured in the incident. The Boeing 737-700 was traveling at 32,500 feet when the engine on the left side of the plane exploded. Passengers said they heard a loud boom and the plane immediately dropped, they said, by what felt like 100 feet. The woman sitting next to the smashed window was drawn towards it and others next to her held her down for 12 minutes until the plane landed. This was the view from on board the Southwest Airlines flight of the blown-out engine after the plane made an emergency landing at Philadelphia International Airport. A piece of shrapnel from it flew backwards and shattered the window. The devastated family of Rye Arden have released a statement paying tribute to her. Jennifer's vibrancy, passion, and love infused our community and reached across our country. Her impact on everything and everyone she touched can never be fully measured. But foremost, she is the bedrock of our family. She and Mike wrote a love story unlike any other. Her beauty and love is evident though her children. We are so appreciate of the outpouring of support from family, friends, and our community. 
We do ask that those who seek to express their condolences and prayers as well as the media outlets respect our privacy at this time. Our family and friends need this time to both grieve and celebrate Jennifer's impact on us all. In her memory, please remember to always be kind, loving caring and sharing. Mayor of Albuquerque Tim Keller added, Today, Albuquerque lost a thoughtful leader who has long been part of the fabric of our community. We are asking that everyone respects the privacy of the family at this time. This is a tremendous and tragic loss for Jennifer's family and many others throughout our city. Her leadership and philanthropic efforts made this a better place every day and she will be terribly missed. We are holding Jennifer and her family in our thoughts. Family friend John Benavidez tweeted, My heart is broken with the news of my good friend Jennifer Reardon's passing. She left a lasting mark on Albuquerque, NM, and UNM with her many contributions. If there was ever an angel on earth, it was Jennifer. Our prayers go out to her family. Before the NTSB's announcement that there was one fatality involved, the Philadelphia Fire Commissioner said she was taken to hospital in a critical condition. One passenger, a woman, was partially drawn out towards the out of the plane, she was pulled back in by other passengers, Todd Bauer, the father of another passenger on board, told NBC10. Terrified passengers shared videos and photos from on board before the plane landed as they descended at 3,000 feet per minute until they leveled out at 10,000 feet. One passenger filmed himself as he fitted his oxygen mask. Something is wrong with our plane. It appears we are going down. Emergency landing. Southwest flight from NYC to Dallas. Marty Martinez said as he broadcast live from the plane on Facebook. Ry Arden, the wife of former city of Albuquerque Chief Operations Officer Michael, pictured with her, was the vice president of community relations for Wells Fargo Bank, New Mexico. He paid $8 to connect to Wi-Fi as the plane was going down, he said, in order to say his goodbyes. He is the passenger who later told CBS the woman's injuries left blood everywhere. There were confused reports from other passengers that someone on board suffered a heart attack. Martinez added that the plane smelled like ash once the window was open. He said flight attendants rushed over in shock and pleaded with passengers to cover up the hole. The first sign of trouble was a loud noise which happened when the engine exploded. Timothy Borman, 37, was sitting at the back of the plane when he said he heard a loud boom. All of a sudden, it felt like we dropped 100 feet. Everybody knew something's going on. This is bad, like really bad. A lot of people started panicking and yelling, just real scared. We were kind of out of control for a while. It seemed like the pilot was having a hard time controlling the plane. Honestly I think we just all thought we were going down, he told Philly.com. Borman, who was traveling with his wife, said they thought they were about to die until the pilot managed to gain control of the aircraft. We're just all really thankful to be alive right now. Thankful to God, thankful to that pilot, he added. Hero pilot Tammy Jo Schultz, pictured, brought the plane down quickly but safely after the crash, saving the lives of the others on board. Matt Tranchin was sitting three rows behind the window that smashed. He described the chaos and said even the flight attendants were crying in fear. Flight attendants rushed up. There was momentary chaos. Everyone kind of descended on where this hole was. As passengers we weren't sure if they were trying to cover up the hole, but the plane smelled like smoke. There was ash coming through the ventilation system. We started dropping, he told ABC News. As kind of an indication of how terrifying it was, some of the crew couldn't hold back their horror. And some were crying as they looked out through the open window onto the engine, he added. As the plane made its descent towards Philadelphia, the crew warned passengers to brace for impact. Southwest Airlines has not acknowledged the woman's injuries. In a statement it put out on Twitter, the airline said, Southwest Airlines Flight 1380, which departed LaGuardia for Dallas Love Field, diverted to PHL because of an operational event. The plane landed safely.
No slides were deployed. It has given no further comment on the injured woman or what caused the engine to explode. When the shrapnel pierced the window, it depressurized the cabin and triggered the oxygen masks. Despite the chaos in the air, others said the emergency landing was fairly calm and smooth. The plane was on its way from LaGuardia Airport in New York City to Dallas when it diverted in the air and turned back on itself to go to Philadelphia. It was flying over western Pennsylvania at around 32,500 feet at the time. One passenger told CNN, it was a stable landing. We started descending, made the turn back to Philadelphia. We were with one engine for maybe 10 minutes. We decreased altitude from 8,000 to 5,000 and then when we finally landed it was relatively smooth, kind of a typical landing so the crew and the pilots did a fantastic job. Passengers were taken from buses to the airport. It is not the first time the malfunction has occurred on a Southwest-operated Boeing 737-700. In August last year, a different flight from New Orleans to Orlando was forced to make an emergency landing at Pensacola Airport in Florida after the casing surrounding one of its engines tore away at a similar altitude. On Tuesday, the airline manufacturer said it was aware of the accident and was prepared to cooperate with investigations. Boeing is aware of an incident with Southwest Airlines flight number 1380. We are gathering more information and stand ready to provide technical assistance, it tweeted. The engine which exploded is a CFM56 turbofan engine which costs $10 million and has a fan diameter of 68 inches. The engines are the most popular engines on single-aisle commercial planes and are used by all of Airbus A320 aircraft. The last time a passenger died in an accident on a U.S. airliner was 2009 when 49 people on board and one on the ground were killed when a Continental Express plane crashed on a house near Buffalo, New York. Southwest has about 700 planes, all of them 737s, including more than 500 737-700s like the one in Tuesday's accident. It is the world's largest operator of the 737. The 737 is the best-selling jetliner in the world and has a good safety record. Southwest CEO Gary Kelly said in Dallas that there were no problems with the plane or its engine when it was inspected Sunday. The jet CFM 567B engines were made by CFM International, jointly owned by General Electric and Safran Aircraft Engines of France. CFM said in a statement that the CFM 567B has had an outstanding safety and reliability record since its debut in 1997, powering more than 6,700 aircraft worldwide. Last year, the engine maker and the Federal Aviation Administration instructed airlines to make ultrasonic inspections of the fan blades of engines like those on the Southwest jet. The FAA said the move was prompted by a report of a fan blade failing and hurling debris but it was unclear whether the particular engine that failed on Tuesday was covered by the directives. There's a ring around the engine that's meant to contain the engine pieces when this happens, said John Goglia, a former NTSB member. In this case it didn't. That's going to be a big focal point for the NTSB, why didn't, the ring, do its job. In 2016, a Southwest Boeing 737-700 blew an engine as it flew from New Orleans to Orlando, Florida, and shrapnel tore a 5-by-16-inch hole just above the wing. The plane landed safely. The NTSB said a fan blade had broken off, apparently because of metal fatigue.